Kai um, Tolu. Um, nice to have you here today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be speaking to you this morning. Yeah, my twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, twin brother. The, the other day, someone saw um, a picture of both of us. I said, oh, is that your twin brother? I'm like, no, it's just my brother. He said, no, man, you guys look so much alike. I, I know, I get, I get that as well. From time to time, people see our pictures and I'm like, oh, are you guys twins or something? Yeah, I know. Yeah, so, yeah. Maybe strong genes or DNA or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's um do a quick one because I know um we've been meaning to do this in a while. Yeah. Just um to talk about um your journey so far, um your writing journey, your personal journey, and things like that. Do you want to talk us through your personal journey and your writing journey as well? Yeah. So uh, yeah. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. In terms of my personal journey, I I work as a financial crime compliance consultant. Mm. Uh, I'm married with two kids, mm. and Newcastle is now home for me. Mm. And yeah, I think and the beauty of this is that there are times we travel to places and we develop an affinity for those cities, those places, and. They become our place of rest, mm. and that is what Newcastle has been has been to me. So, mm. Yeah, mm. and in terms of my writing journey, I published my first book sometimes in August twenty seventeen. Yeah, and thus far, I have published twenty books, mm. won a couple of awards, mm. arrived in the genres of poetry, mm. short stories essays and children's literature mm. and once upon a time i was endorsed by the art council england as well mm. as a writer with exceptional talent nice one because i was still i was still about to come to some of those things that you you mentioned i know that uh, a few of your friends call you the rare lion of newcastle <laughs> which i know is um, something that was uh, readapted from your first book yeah. so uh, and that takes me to the next question so what has that journey been f- for you from publishing your very first book? What was that writing journey been? Because from the first book in 2017, you said, yeah, and then this is 2023, and then you've had 20 in your collection. I mean, that's, that's a lot. What has that been? Um, y- yeah, so I remember in, one of, in the last book launch I had, one of my great friends in the writing community in Newcastle, David Drew, he mentioned that when you came to Newcastle back then, you were a, a little cub, mm-hmm. and, that, and that I was looking up to him. But now I have grown to become the lion of Newcastle, and he now looks up to me. Yeah, so and it shows it, it, it goes to show that in whatever thing we lay our hands to do, we, when we embrace growth, we you know, we the, the, the is the we can grow in in limitless ways mm. yeah so when i came to newcastle in 2016 i joined the writing community back back then and you know from publishing my first book dead lions don't roll the book was accepted far and wide yeah within the newcastle literary community even and beyond beyond the uk borders to you know so and i think what the lions don't roll did was whenever i went out there to perform people would roll along with me. Mm. So can I have a loud roll like a lion then? It, and with time, whenever I mounted the stage, fans of my literary works would just start roaring. Mm. We see some people backing, some people meowing like cats, <laughs> you know, with the other titles, they dogs don't back, yeah. and dead cats don't meow as well. So I think it just became something that the name, the name, stopped, yeah, 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 yeah. So it became a sort of symbolism with Tolu Akinemi. Mm. when anyone saw me oh the lion of newcastle and i think like i always say i've lived up to that name 20 mm. books is an attestation of the fact that i have indeed become the lion of newcastle nice one nice one as much as uh, um we all don't like labels i know labels are quite important in the real world where we live yeah. would you describe yourself as an African auto or would you describe yourself as an English auto of African heritage? Uh, what category do you think um, you want to put yourself in? 
Yeah, uh, I would say uh, I would not despise my African roots. Yeah. Even though my works are universal in nature, right. but they are still much ingrained within the African experience. So mm. I would proudly wear the badge of an African writer. Yeah. But all in all, I'm all about humanity. Mm. I am first human and I write mainly about the human experience but I, I would embrace the badge of an African writer. Nice one. Now if um, for the non-African um, readers who, um, who pick your materials, the anecdotes, the proverbs and some of the very beautiful things you try to uh, capture within the African culture, do you have other ways of um, trying to communicate the beauty of those um, works to them? Uh, I, I think uh, in terms of communicating my ideas to, you know, I think well, most of my works, they are relatable. I'm a poet that, uh, you know, in the days of old, people say poetry because of the elite, elitist language of poetry. Yeah. People did not really like poetry, but I try to write like in a relatable way where people can actually understand. Mm -hmm. So even using the anecdotes, using uh, the right metaphors, similes, mm -hmm. conveying the right imagery and writing in a way that it makes it easy for my readers to be able to grasp what I'm saying mm -hmm. and see yeah, so just writing in relatable language and I think that has been the hallmark and trademark of my work as well. Nice, nice. Um, I was just a little bit curious because I know this must sound a bit like, yeah, it's not such a big deal, but you've had 20 books in your collection you've won a major award you've got a day job you've got a family how do you juggle all of this together <laughs> to find the right balance i mean yes yeah i think yeah that's a very important question because people always ask me that question as well to say how do you balance everything and why i tell people is that what you will always find time for whatever is important to you Mm. Our body needs food every day and we find time to eat. Yeah. So if you have a gift, you have a talent, you have anything you are passionate about, you always create time for that. Mm. But I think that's more of English grammar. But I think in terms of, you know, relating it to the way I fashion my life, I write whenever I write. Mm. So I'm not a writer who follows set rules. You know, some writers will tell you, oh, write 100 words a day, write 200 words a day. But what I always advise fellow writers and upcoming writers as well is that do whatever works for you. Mm. Don't, because most times people want to follow, oh, because Tola Kemi follows this pattern, then that is the pattern that works. No, mm. work, you know, with the pattern that works for you. But whatever you are passionate about, whatever you want to do, want to invest your time in, then follow it the way you, you feed your body with food every day. Mm. Then, yeah, always find time for that. That's the mantra I live by. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, just whilst you were talking right now, a question just came to my mind. So, in your early days of writing, what would you consider the mistakes that you made? And if you were to do it differently, how do you think you would do it differently? Yeah, I think the mistakes I made in the early days was not really having like you know, not having that niche in mm. terms of, I, you know, I think the early mistakes was not having that originality in the writing voice. Yeah. But I think the moment I was able to tackle that, where people would pick up my book and say, oh, this is a Tudor Kiemi's book, mm. I think it became very easy. But I think one major attribute for us writers is that even though through the mistakes, it's always good for us writers to like showcase even the mistakes of the world, project those mistakes. Mm. A lot of people, not just maybe in writing, in everyday life, they want to paint a picture perfect life. Mm. They don't want people to see the mistakes. So we have a lot of great writers today mm. who, you know, who in their early days, they were, if I would say they were rubbish, they were shite, mm. but they, they tried to wipe this imprint mm. as if that side of them or that part of them never existed. Mm. So I think it's very important and pertinent for us as writers as well to to be able to showcase our mistakes to mm. upcoming writers as well mm. because it, it, it is a way it helps them to know that yeah it's okay to make mistakes yeah and even through the mistakes there can be progress but i think in the early days i also i think after finding that originality of voice 
then knowing my target audience and right and you know producing works that works for those audience i think that has really worked for me as well fantastic so um which authors have inspired your works i mean do you have people in the writing uh, industry or in, in the poet, uh, poetry genre that inspired the work that you create yeah so i i would just mention two names so i would say uh, a nigerian you know literary icon wali shoyinka has really inspired me yeah and he's inspired me in ways that what cannot really describe and i believe that whatever he has achieved on this, on this literary journey i also have the potential to also achieve mm -hmm. like greater things as well and i would also say uh, charles bukowski as well he's inspired me a great deal mm -hmm. he's inspired me to the point where at some point i used to tell my partner that put some respect on my name this is tolu bukowski <laughs> 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 this is tolu bukowski put some respect on me ah uh -uh. so although he's oh uh, he's is is dead now but i always say writers are living 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 things mm -hmm. writers don't die so i believe bukowski is not dead mm -hmm. he lives on and i think that's the thing about us writers mm -hmm. through our works our works are read even in in death we are living we are living entities because mm -hmm. our works still speaks still resonates with people so those are these are two great literary icons that you know i i look up to and yeah i'm, I'm proud of their literary success nice so i know some writers talk about writer's block do you believe in writer's block have you experienced that yourself can you describe what it feels like if you have yeah uh, i think in every writer's lifetime uh, you know experience a writer's block would there will be situations whereby nothing is flowing yeah so i have experienced writer's block but mm -hmm. what I do, I'm a man who loves nature, who loves to run, who loves to jog every morning. Mm -hmm. So true, when I feel like it's not working, I don't pressure myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been like a pattern I followed with my writing as well. Mm -hmm. Not following the pattern of uh, like not forcing it in a way. Yeah. So writing when, okay, say if I want to write today, I know I'm writing today. And if I'm not writing, I'm not writing. So yeah. I don't really. So if if there's a blog, I I will probably just leave it. At times, I just keep writing and come back to it later. So it's one of two ways: either leave it, go on a walk, do some other activity, listen mm. to music, or in some other way, just keep writing and come back to it to you know to make it make sense. Because yeah. now, at some point, you can be writing what does it actually make sense, mm. or you know when you go over it a couple of times, then it begins to like make sense nice nice just just kind of a cheeky question and it's quite tricky as well i'm just a bit curious how many unpublished or should i say half finished books do you have i know you've got 20 fully published <laughs> that finished so i the way you talk about writing i imagine maybe you've got some 100 or, or 150 <laughs> <laughs> of published materials how many are published uh, or half finished books have you got right now yeah so i always say something like whenever I, I want to die i want to die empty that's just have like various minim minimum of unpublished books as possible mm. like not having a lot of books that have not been published yet so but at the moment i have another book that is nearly finished mm. currently with the editors it's a collection of poems mm. on financial crime compliance which is the area where i work in mm. yeah and i will be the first poet in recorded history who living or dead that will be writing a full-length collection of poems on this subject on this subject here then i also have a memoir that is a work in progress here so but that that has been packed for a while mm. i have a non-fiction book for young young people and also i have a novel novel as well that is a work in progress but mm. i guess it's going to be based, like on the basis of having time and all of that yeah so but i also i the other day i saw like, I, I had another poetry collection on my laptop but Nothing is really going on with that. So, so then, roughly five, yeah, six. roughly four, five books here yeah, in the box here. Yeah. Nice one. So basically, if um, I was just talking and I was thinking that um, poetry could sometimes be a very lonely genre. Yeah. From the feel you get from a lot of readers in this generation, many people don't seem to be to really appreciate the work of poetry yeah. like it used to be do you as an author do you um try to 
convert the uninitiated or do you just want to focus on people who appreciate your works and just sell to them? I think the goal of every writer is always to like convert the uninitiated like you mentioned but uh, apart from poetry anyways I write in other genres as well but for, but for poetry I try to write in the relatable way mm. that, my, that my readers would be able to understand because mm. I think the major problem with poetry in the past used to be the fact that poetry used to be written in complex language yeah. and a lot of readers were put off by the elitist language mm. in, in poetry. So but in this present generation, we have a lot of writers who write in easy to understand language mm. and I think for myself that is the path that I've chosen as well mm. and over the years I have many readers who will now share affinity with my works yeah i have, re- I have a loyal following from from my readership and i try to and i think even in recent a lot of recent reviews i've, I've seen readers who either two would never read poetry but when they read my poetry they they they, they really loved they really loved it mm. but i think that's the aim of you know the aim you know, that is the aim of my poetry as well mm. to be able to reach people who would either to no no want no want to read poetry mm. yeah so and I think I've been able to achieve that spectacularly at time out market I have met readers who would buy one or two books and they will come back to buy more books because they enjoyed the poems mm. or the stories mm. so I think it's very important for writers to understand what works for them and like follow that follow that route yeah 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 so simplicity is yeah yeah your simplicity style. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i get that in writing in music and the works of creativity generally yeah. uh, i know there are uh, two major categories of people yeah. there are people who write or who create this because they really enjoy doing this yeah. there are some other people who do this because they look at the commercial side of things. They want to do this because they want to be able to sell or appeal to the people. Uh, it it be of a cheeky one, but what category would you put yourself in? Yeah, I think um, personally, I I write because I love to write because I enjoy I enjoy writing. Mm. But like I always say, when the world comes, the fame. Uh, yeah, there has been little fame as well, mm. but when it comes in, you know, in the right proportion, wealth, fame, money, everything, uh, no, but I, I would not reject that. It will be, mm. it will be a, a just reward for my years of years of service to the craft, mm. to the game. Yeah, but I think I, I write because, and I think the works also show that it's all for the love. Mm. So because if I were writing for the money, if I if I when I've published the first one, the second one. And I've not made my millions, I would have probably just hanged my boots and say, Oh, I've had enough. Yeah. But when you do it for the love for the love of writing, for the love for the love of your craft, then you keep pushing on and not looking at oh the bottom line. Yeah. Just you keep doing it and hopefully at some point things things work out in your favor. And there are so many and I think seeing a lot of poets also, you know, making selling millions of books also gives me great encouragement mm. that if they can do it then i also can do it so yeah my dreams are valid my dreams are alive that even in my lifetime i will make a success of this writing of, of my of my writing of my writing as well oh wow nice one thank you um you've won an award um even though i, I don't really know the details of that award you might be able to talk about it um, in this question that i want to ask but winning an award is it a strong enough motivation for you to keep writing or do you think um your motivation is still going to be the same if if you have you didn't win that award and then what award did you win this is something you want to talk to the viewers about yeah so my collection of points in books full of won the poetry category at the best indie book awards Mm. And my collection of short stories, Infant of Silence, also won the awards as well at Indie Readers Discovery Awards in the short stories category. Mm. And I, the Infant of Silence, also won Best Cover Design in the fiction for fiction mm. in the Next Generation Indie Book Awards as well. So that that's three awards. Mm. And I think uh, I always say this that even though the goal is not to win an award, but for every writer, for every creative, if we win an award. 
then why not take it i would mm. always take it any day anytime mm. it's a just is a justification for your work you've done the work and yeah. when the awards come so some people might say oh awards does not matter it is it doesn't matter to you because you've not won what you what you want mm. but when you win it it's an attestation of your work and it can also motivate you to keep doing more mm. to keep striving for excellence because it shows that there are people out there who reckon with your work yeah. and who are celebrating your work so i would say if you win an award please take it celebrate mm. it you've, you've put in the work you've won the award don't say oh no it doesn't matter mm. when you win it you know it matters so yeah nice so are there um other autos that you are friends with or are there other autos that you you consider as your inner circle that help you get better at writing or do you just not um, connect with other autos at all yeah i have a lot of auto friends mm. in the newcastle writing community yeah oh we get along very well oh in the early days we we had writing groups where we would critique each other's work mm. and i think that helped me to greatly improve as well mm. not just critiquing the work but also critiquing the performance so when it comes to spoken word poetry performance mm, so yeah. i think i think that helped me a great deal so and in terms of yeah so in terms of friends um, at the point i have i had like other friends as well that uh, especially for some of my books maybe about two of my books who, who read the books who would like just give me feedback solid feedback from their own perspective as well mm. so i think this as well has helped me greatly on my writing journey so it's always good for writers so i have like accountability partners mm. and uh, uh, like i don't presently maintain any accountability partners at the moment but i think it's very important for writers to have to have, to have people who auto friends mm. who would like you know review your work critique your work because it's also in the way it helps you to see before you put the work out there to the general public mm. to see if what you're putting out there if it's fit for purpose mm. if it's not just something that you know you because once it goes out there and you know it's very hard to pull it to, yes. pull, to pull it back in mm. so it's very important to have if you have an inner circle of friends of authors who would help you critique your work is very important i believe in that as well yeah now we're running um this um, short interview we're running up with this i've got just two little questions to ask so the first one is looking at your journey and looking at how, looking at how far you have come if you could tell your younger writing self anything what would that be yeah i would say that before you start out the journey know that writing is a vulnerable spot mm, you're telling yourself now so yeah, you're, yeah. you're telling your younger writing self yeah, yeah yeah writing is a vulnerable spot yeah and which is one of my personal quotes that with writing it comes with exposing your ideas to the world mm. it comes with and when you expose your ideas your thoughts to the world you will get critiqued you, you could get bashed you could get negative reviews yeah don't let it weigh you down mm. pick from the you know see the positivity in the negativity mm. and push on from there and yeah or you might in your lifetime you might not actually become a best-selling author as well mm. so don't do it because you are in there for the money yeah you know just push on if you be passionate about it mm. and yeah let the creativity be the driver of anything you do not just the fact that you want to because it's just it doesn't happen it really happens where <laughs> most authors in their lifetime do not sell more than 100 books mm. so if you are there for the money you might you might be disappointed as well so that is just a note to my right to my younger self mm. that the part is not always layered with gold there could be a lot of a lot of writers there are some writers go on tantrums where people get the negative reviews yeah but not everything not all negativity should be seen as someone is trying to attack me or attack my work yeah so it should just be a way to help you to grow as well obviously not everyone will review a book objectively yeah. so it's just for a writer to decipher if this is coming from a place of objectivity yeah or it's coming it's coming list with it or someone who's, who, who just eats you or eats your works yeah so i think that's very important for to my younger self and also younger writers out there who are watching this as well nice one nice one so um the last question obviously is i know a lot of people are listening or watching right now and they want to know how to connect with you on social media so um how do they find you on social media 
Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Tolu Toludo at Tolu Akiemi. I'm on Instagram at Tolu Toludo, and I'm also on Facebook at Tolu A Akiemi, which is my Facebook page. And also, I'm on YouTube at Tolu Toludo. So, Tolu Toludo, Tolu A Akiemi. I'm the guy. I'm the guy, and yeah, mm -hmm. keep keep connecting with me. My website is www.toludo.com, and or uh, toluakiemi.com my publisher's website is the roaring lion newcastle.com nice one nice one nice talk, nice talk, nice talking to you brother easy man nice yeah. talk, nice talking to you yes, thank nice you very much yes. yes thanks